Genesis 6. Now, this is something I dealt with before, but in a different way. And I don't want to, um, uh, I don't want to set off any alarms in your head, but it's very important that you hear what God is saying in this time and, and this day, right? Because we got people coming in here to this church and the ministry, and they need to be free so they can work, right? We don't want nobody bound, and we don't want anybody limited either. But the two things you have to have, first, the knowledge of the word of God, how to apply it, right? Because in the evil day, in the last day, people will fall away because their knowledge is not up to par. And they'll fool you with all the stuff that's coming out and tell you, you know, grace covers this. And you don't need, I'm not even getting to the whole Creflo Dollar discussion on, on, um, <laughs> tithing. You, you know, to, to me, stuff is pointless. And if anybody who has the Holy Spirit would know, if the Spirit talks to you, he would, he would tell you, don't make waves in the body of Christ right now. We need to deal with salvation. We need to, we need to be snatching souls in, not dealing with money. You can go to heaven and have not tithed not one day in your life. So you know that. I don't want nobody to get fooled. Now you can go to heaven and have not tithed one day. Okay? But you cannot go to heaven in disobedience. Very simple. If God told, if Jesus says, if the spirit tells you to do something and you disobey, that's on you. But we cannot send you to hell or curse you for a principle that we're not sure of 100%. We said there is laws of God. It's very simple that Paul said, stated, he says, I, does not, I do not speak this of the spirit. I speak this of myself, but I'm allowed to say it. If God wants to, if, if God wants to curb what I'm saying, it wouldn't be written in the word. So somehow it will be taken out. And we take all those words from Paul. Right? Come on, y'all, quiet now. We take those words and, and we say, this is the word of God. We don't say that's the word of Paul. But Paul did. Y'all not? Okay. Yeah? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Elder John. I'm going to keep on going. Because this is what we do. We hear the words of men. And because we, don't know, because we do not know the word of God... We take, if I take a snapshot of you in scripture, I'd be plucking eyes and tongues out. That's right. That's right. There is an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth in the Bible. That's right. That's right. A lot of us would be dead or toothless. Come on. Jesus told his disciples, we don't preach that, but Jesus said, Go buy a sword. Sell what you got and go buy a sword. That's Jesus. Okay. We go on and on with conjecture. Pinpoint something in the scripture. Harp on it. Pinpoint tithing in the scripture and harp on it. I ain't got to apologize for no tithing because it's a, it's a principle so the church can run. I ain't got to apologize for money. I ain't never going to stand up and apologize to you for something I said with money. Because first of all, I made up in my mind with God that I ain't trying to get your money like that. I don't need a jet. If God wants me to fly somewhere, I'm going. The way is already prepared. If he needs me to have a submarine, he's going to get it. I got to apologize to you. I only got to apologize when I overdo something. Let's leave that alone. I ain't got to get up and apologize and tell you don't buy my books. The, you, the books are brought. The books is from the 80s, baby. 80s and 90s. It's, it's 2022. You made your sales already. Gone. People done read about ties and died. And you apologizing now. Y'all see, please, pe people of God, please don't be distracted. The idea is to preach Jesus and the cross. 
Stop focusing on all this other stuff and you won't feel like, oh, the church is duping me. Well, all they do is take your money. Baby, I couldn't live off the church if you paid, if you tried. We couldn't. You know how much money you got to make to floss? <laughs> oh, look at them. They driving that car. They doing something else. It ain't the tithes. Because it ain't a hundred tithing in no church ask the trustees how many people pay their tithes consistently right oh quiet now huh oh. got nothing to say you oh the church is taking pastor taking using our money oh what money not yours definitely not yours stop it shut your lip don't even let that lip just drop because you're just lying. Like you pay your tithes and offerings every Sunday. Devil be damned. God, you lying. Truth ain't in you. And you spread that mess and make people doubt the church. And they come up with these heresies to make everybody look like they're guilty of something that has never happened. Then we start preaching that stuff on Facebook and listen to these half Half-baked prophets, they ain't got no power. Lord Jesus. I'm watching one guy. He talking about what the Lord said, and he got a whole rainbow on his wrist. Devil is a liar talking about tithing. Child, look down. We're not, we not watching and praying. We complaining. Come on, somebody. It's not a rant and a rave. This is true. You know? Wake up. Wake up. Stay woke. <laughs> Are you woke, brother? Somebody said that. Are you woke, brother? I said, I don't know. I'm just walking around. I'm walking around driving, so I guess I am woke. I don't know. Whoa. Get out of here with that mess. All this 125th Street gospel. Stop it. Started in Harlem. Y'all preaching something and selling belts at the same time. I'm preaching on a soapbox and they selling belts right next to you and incense. Come on, man, get a building, do something. And y'all believe in them. And they looking like all kinds of, they looking like Funk Master back in the 70s, looking like G Funk. And all these things, they're talking about they the original Israelites. Hey, man, George Clinton was wearing them same suits in the 70s and he ain't preached none of this stuff. Y'all are fool. <laughs> Big back to Africa bracelets and medallions. <laughs> Y'all listen to them. Smelling like blue Nile oil. Y'all crazy. Egyptian musk, blue Nile. Y'all know what it is. We all wore it at one time. Smelling like oil. Don't come here with that. I'm gonna thank you preaching in Harlem. Nah, I'm just kidding. I, that's right, I'm a jokester. Okay. I don't have nobody stopping me today. All right. Let's read. Let's read. Somebody just, you can laugh in church and have some fun. Amen. Okay. Genesis 6. Let's start 6 and 1. Let's stand for the reading of the word, please. Amen. God bless. Here we go. And it came to pass when men, I'm going to um, start doing, well, you know what? Let me just do Amplify Classic for, and so I don't have to switch back over. Okay? You got the Amplify Classic? Okay. When men began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them, the sons of God, the, 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 the uh, I won't get into the, the Benin Elohim. Benin Elohim, the sons of God, those are not just angels, okay? But you have to learn that in Bible school, right? They're, they're angelic beings, but they're more than that. And my, my, my Elder Joseph Jenkins will, 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 will school you on that, the watchers, okay? They were sent. It's biblical. It's not something spooky. The sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair, and they took wives of all they desired and chose. 
Then the Lord, and then there comes that argument, how can an angel have sex and produce because they were spirit beings? They were high-ranking spirit beings, right? We don't know how they were made, but we know they were high-ranking. It's the same concept that the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary. She had a baby with no man. Okay. But these beings were able to, to change and to make their self of human nature to reproduce. Okay? All right. You got that? Look it up. If you don't believe me, look it up. The best thing to do is look it up. Because there's a production that happens from this, from the daughters of the human race and from the sons of God from a spiritual race. Then the Lord said, my spirit shall not forever dwell and strive with man, for he also is flesh, but his days shall be 120. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God lived or mingled with the daughters of men, they bore children to them. Very simple. These were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Now, not to make you, to spook you out, but you heard of, of like Hercules and, and all these mythical people, right? And all these people who are half, half men, Thor and all that, half men and half God. Okay, is it really true? Is it phony? Maybe their names, maybe that's not the events. That's a lot of made up stuff, right? But the idea and the concept is here in the Bible. You understand? This right here in the word of God, that this is what started to cause trouble. Anytime you mix the holy with the unholy, there's a big issue. Ask yourself, what did you mix? You didn't make a giant, but you made a giant problem. These were the mighty men of old and renown. The Lord saw the weakness of man was great on the earth. And every imagination and intention of human thinking was only evil continually. That's how you know something was mixed. Because even a murderous, murderous murderer does not kill his mother. But if he's continually evil, he'll kill everything living around him. That you, that's how you know something's wrong. Okay, now let's skip down. And I think I want to go to, go to, um, well, I might as well keep reading. And the Lord saw the weakness. Okay, now six. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on earth, and he was grieved at heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy, blot out, and wipe out away mankind whom I have created from the face of the ground. Not only man, but the beasts and the creeping things and the birds of the air, for it grieves me and makes me regretful that I have made them. But Noah found what? Favor, favor grace slash favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the history of the generation of Noah. Noah was just and right, was a just and righteous man, blameless in his evil generation. Noah walked in the habitual fellowship with God. He kept, kept putting God continually in his thought. That doesn't mean he walked around praying. That doesn't mean he walked around in the spirit because there was no Holy Spirit. He wasn't around there speaking in tongue like we do. But he kept God in his mind. How much do you render God in your mind to everything? Right? Now, God sees him. And I don't want to talk about, about um, 11 says the earth was depraved and putrid in God's sight. Stank. And the land was filled with violence. This is what we are right now. The land was filled with violence, desecration, infringement, outrage, assault, and lust for power. If that ain't us right now, what is holding God's hand from destroying us? And God looked upon the world and saw how degenerate, debased, and vicious it was for all humanity and corrupt 
corrupted their way upon the earth and lost their true direction. God said to Noah, I intend to make end of all flesh for through men the land is filled with violence and behold, I will destroy them and the land. You know, it's funny that God said the land is filled with violence but not sex. I want you to think what God hates and what what your actions lead to because sometimes your your pride it's funny what they, we call pride and now what we call pride because it's both the same I watched a, a transsexual talk about this he said he said listen he said um, because it was Macy Gray who talked about you know that whole thing that a man could never you know I don't care what sex change and it's very true, right? It's very true. I, I, this is, I want you to know what your pastor feels. Keep on standing. This, I want you to know this. Everybody's going to come through that door and be welcome because right. Jesus is a welcoming Savior. And he said he wished that everyone, that all come to repentance, that no one be lost. So how can all come to repentance and we shut the door? can't shut the door on a homosexual, a transsexual, a bisexual, or any sexual, or just a fornicator or adulterer. You can't shut the door. You don't like it. That's the problem. And God don't say what you like. All has nothing to do with your preference. You know, I want y'all to hear this. Someone that hurt you might come through those doors to be saved. And you're going to have to straighten up your spirit and accept it. You can't hold no grudge with somebody else and then think that, (laughs) Lord, let's not go there. The problem is this. The problem is body of Christ. I don't have a problem with them because they're not them because then here we go with blacks, Chinese, anybody that's not, you know, anybody has a little tint to their skin or another different name for another, you know, it's always something. I don't have a problem. I just, I am not. You're not going to camp out and force your way. You're not coming up here dressed like something else. So Macy Gray was right. You don't, you know, you, you can, you can, uh, uh, what do they call it now? I, I uh, associate with, identify myself. And that's another message that's coming. Identification. I identify with a woman, but I don't bleed every month. I have no pains from a menstrual cycle. You see what I'm saying? This is the devil that wants you to identify with only your expression. Uh, 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 let Let me say it again. We only identify with expression because my sexual choice is what I prefer. My identification is what I want to be like. But what I am, I have to look at after I take everything off. What's still there, brother? You don't need pads. You don't need none of the stuff that the women do. You don't need none of that. You don't need a bra. Nope. You got too much hair on your back. That, that, that thing, that Adam's apple ain't going nowhere. And this is what Satan wants to do. To make you ignore your identification. Tell somebody, I cannot ignore who I really am. Okay. With that said, you cannot ignore who you are in the spirit. You cannot ignore that you have not been preaching the gospel, singing, doing whatever he called you to do. You have not been doing it because you've been ignoring your ID. Mm, Takes another whole step now. So God calls Noah. Hey, Noah. Noah. 
He became the father of three sons. The, the land is depraved. And here he goes. The Lord says, hey, this is what you do. Gone in 13. God said to Noah, I intend to make an end of all flesh. For though man in the land is filled with violence, and behold, I will destroy men. Make yourself an ark of gopher and cypress wood. Make rooms, blah, 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 blah. Go down to 15. And this is the way you are to make it, right? 300 cubits, the breadth 50 cubits. Now this is 450 feet by 75 feet by 45 feet. You do the math. That's big. He's doing all this. He's making all this, and he has no tools. No power drill. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Right? God says, I will establish my covenant. 22. And Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. Have a seat. Lord, help me to preach this. I need you to look at somebody and tell them with all honesty, it's getting ready to rain. Revival has to come before the rain hits. Revival's coming, but it's getting ready to rain. The earth is being filled with too much junk. Make sure everybody come from downstairs. I ain't doing that downstairs. Brothers, I don't want nobody chilling downstairs. Unless they're a mother and a, and a child. Everybody's in church from now on. Praise God. Don't come here to go downstairs. Let me keep saying it. Deacons, elders, they ain't coming here to go downstairs. They come here to go downstairs, I'll pay for the Uber home. No, 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 no. You couldn't do that in a mosque. We're going to stop this mess. The devil is a liar. Some people need, they need the Holy Ghost. You need to stop smoking weed, stop drinking. You can't do that downstairs. You need to be right up in here in this room and get all you can get from the Lord. Kids and all. Kids are in the room just looking at all types of pornography and witchcraft and stuff, and they come to church and then go away. You ain't going, I ain't got nobody talking back to me. You ain't going away from Jesus, not in this time. You go out here and get in an accident, and then we're going to mourn you. And you had a chance. Stay where the fire's at, even if you don't like it. Okay, that's enough for that one. Am I wrong? Can I get some help? People should be standing with me, even if it's your kid. Even if they home chilling. Point to the camera say, get here. That's all. Let's get here. That's all right. You got a chance to make it right. Look at the church. God is filling us up. Packing this out. We're going to be more and more. This ain't it. I'm telling you right now, in three months, hit Kano Shore. You're going to see God in a whole other way. We're going to force the hand of God to move us out of here. That's what he told me. Force me to make you move. Noah is described as being the earth, the, Noah's world is corrupt. But he's righteous. Now, I want to get you here something. And I'm not going against the word of God. But Noah's, do you think Noah's righteous because he did not sin at all? No. For all have sinned. Yes. There ain't no way Noah didn't sin. But Noah was righteous because he kept God in his. He kept remembering God. Remembering God. There's another reason why Noah was righteous too. Okay, I'm going to get there in a second. God looked at the earth and behold, all was corrupt. So God's grace, the grace of God, commissioned Noah. God did not need to counsel with no one to destroy what he made. He could have just brought down judgment. But his eyes of righteousness found someone who was righteous. Did you hear me? That what, when God breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul, that means God's life is connected to every life. That's why you could never lie to God about how you live. Because even the breath that you take tells him the truth. 
Anytime you take in a breath, that's telling him about what you have done, your mindset. You can't lie to him because he is the breath that you breathe. He is the oxygen that you take in. He is the fabric of the DNA that you are. He is the dirt that created you. He is everything. He's all in all. You can't lie to what you're made up of. That's why in the Bible it says, ye are gods. Small g, not capital G. It's a big difference. Right? But you'll die like what? You'll die like mere peasants. Because you won't eat, you don't know. And I'm not wrong now. Know your word. You'll die because you don't know who you are. You've never lived, you never reached a higher level of God rather than Lord help me, help me, help me, help me. Because gods don't ask for just little help. Oh boy. Okay, I, I'm going too far. There's a reason why I'm going here, okay? Um, there's a spirit that's getting ready to fight the church. And it's going to be in religion. And it's going to fool the very elect to believe that there's something other than the grace of Jesus. Okay. Mm -hmm. And God in his commission, commission. Now, when God has a problem with man, he raises another man. To help men. Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost, get through here. He raises another man to help man. So he decides, I'm going to use Noah. So Noah now has a, a long time. He has to, a long, possibly 120 years, it took Noah and his family to build the ark. He preaches, it's going to rain. But God... Ain't it funny that God gave man a 120-year lifespan, but it took a lifespan of 120 years for Noah to build the ark? Oh, there's some dope stuff I'm about to give y'all. Let, let, me, let me give you another thing. Uh, uh, I'll wait in the, and, and improve it to you in a second. Um, Genesis 6 and 3. What does that say? Since God's spirit won't dwell with man always, he's his, his spirit. He, 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 that word chide or, or to deal with man, he's getting, what does it take to make your God tired of you? I want you to ask yourself, have you, have you ever thought to yourself, is God tired of me? Y'all not hearing me. Because I don't care where you sit in the church or who you think you are, at some point, you've gotten tired of somebody. At some point, your wife, your husband, your children, somebody has, you've been like, whatever. Have you ever thought, is God tired of me? Have I done enough to be on his good side? <laughs> I know grace is, is afforded to everybody. But he could give you grace and still be tired of you. Have I done enough? Ugh. Uh. Is God taking his attention off of me and putting it on somebody else because I didn't give him enough attention? And, 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 and what's happening is sin is stinking in God's nostril. And so now God has to create. Now, when you start to look at stuff like this, you got to wonder what there's a thing in, 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 in names. Help me, Jesus. There's a thing with names. Somebody say names. Okay. Names mean something. I really didn't want to do part of this, but I, I guess I will. So in Genesis 5, how do we get to Noah? Somebody say, how do we get to Noah? How do we get to Noah? Okay. We get to Noah because we have to start with Adam. If we start with Adam, I'll give you. Adam's name means man. Somebody say man. man. Now, Adam is with Eve, but Adam and Eve have the same name until sin hits. 
And she's not named Eve by God. She's named Eve by Adam. So you have Adam, which means man. You have Seth, which means appointed. Seth has a son named Enosh. Enosh's name means sorrow, dirge, right? Uh huh. Then you have um, you have another Kenan son, which is Malaya, Mahalai, whatever it is, and it means blessed or praised. The L in that. Anytime you see an L at the end of the name, that's a name for God. Ooh, God, I'm gonna get there. Then you have then you have a son that was named Jared from the verb. Yadah means shall come down. Now, I can keep on going. The first 10 names is the representation of what Jesus is coming to do. You can put it together, okay? Um, then you have Jared, who's, who had a, who, whose, whose son was named Enoch, which means teaching and commencement. Then you have, uh, then you have uh, Noah. This is where we stop. I could keep on going, but you have Noah. He walked with God. Noah. 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 Stop at Noah. I'll keep on going, but stop at Noah. Noah. This is the man, and I'll give you his name later, but this is the man where deliverance has to come and a new world has to start. You don't know how powerful you are or your name, and you don't know what dispensation you're bringing in, but you have not said yes fully. Wow, that's so good. Yes, sir. There is, we are, uh, um, there's arguments about what the dispensation that we are in, but to every family, there's a dispensation of grace. And the level of grace is based on the yes of men. Who has said yes to the Lord and their family to bring the light to their family? Noah has to, uh, all he did, I want y'all to stay with me. All he did was walk with God, but he never knew that he was going to be the fulfillment of grace to the whole world. God looks at him and says, I'm going to use you because if I don't use you, I'm destroying all. Because all men are corrupt. Because these beings have gone around. The idea of the devil, listen to me, was to taint all human blood. Because he did not want the Genesis 3 and 15 to come to pass. He did not know where he was going to be destroyed. That's the first gospel gleam. Learn it. He did not know there was a promise from God and he knew it was coming. That you will be destroyed by another human. And it will be the seed of a woman that will get you. Lucifer is looking for the seed of the woman. Yes, he is. But he knows this one thing. If I corrupt seed, that seed ain't coming back to hurt me. Because it's a piece of me. If I can get and fool these these beings to mate with these women, to mate with the animals. That's why you have a half man, half horse carved in China. But go all the way to Jamaica, look in there and see a half man, half horse carved in stone there. That's why you can go all the way to Alaska and see the same thing. Oh, y'all not with me. I'm not telling you what's real and what's not. Just you, you think about it. How is all these carvings where people who could not get to, the, to other people across the whole world have the same carvings. Something happened. I need you to tell yourself, something happened. Something ungodly happened. So something ungodly happened to you. The devil saw there was a righteous seed in you. So he decided to molest you when you were seven. To make you hate every man secretly in your heart. That you could never, ever, ever have a good relationship. And no one ever get you free from it. 
The devil decides that I'm going to take those young men and have them molested by their nasty uncle or their coach or this or that. And let's sweep it under the rug and let that thing grow in them because it's an ungodly hatred. So you'll never grow up to deliver what you hate. Okay, no, why are y'all so quiet? I, I'll, let, I'll let your mother be high every day. I'll let you won't get high every day, but you'll hate drug addicts. I'll let, I'll let your father be a drunk. Yeah, I'll let him provide, but he'll be a drunk. So he'll never have a great father and son or father and mother relationship. I'll let, I'll let the unholy mate with the holy. Yeah, let your mother be saved. Let her pray every day, but let your father drink every day. Mm. Somebody say, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Mm. So Noah, Noah, what is it about you? What r- Noah's righteousness was this, that his bloodline was pure. Makes no, doesn't make any, uh, doesn't bother you at all, doesn't alarm you at all, but there is no, There's no devil blood in Noah. There's no giant DNA. God can start again with a family with a pure bloodline. Because he's not making another Adam. That would mean that he failed. Okay. If God has to wipe all of y'all out in your family and start again, he failed with redemption. Because every family has a savior. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm, uh. You're sitting here today as the savior of your family, but you got all types of other DNA running through you, but now we have the blood of Jesus to cure it, and you won't accept the blood fully. You keep on going through what you're going through because you won't accept your deliverance because you need a blood transfusion. And it don't come by sticking a needle in your arm. It comes by the word of God. And the more you accept the word purifying your blood, you become the savior of your family. You'll be able to talk to every disease, every issue, every habit. It becomes a bloodline of freedom. Yet you don't understand why. So you let your excuses and your attitude run all through your system and then come to church and get a jump from the spirit and then you go back and accept what's in your blood but the devil is a liar you have been called to change your bloodline you gotta refuse what the devil's pumping through you I don't care how you feel I don't care if you wanna be with a bird and I don't care if you wanna identify with a pig whatever it is refuse it refuse Y'all not talking back to me. I said refuse it. What we do is we sit in our homes, we sit in our cars, and we get these whiffs of, of, of different feelings. I, I don't know how to... We, today I feel like I want to be, be a bird and, and, and a bee, and a, I, I want to live in a, in a tree. And we go, and you say to your feeling, that's so true. Y'all not talking to me. You start to agree. How do you think we messed up with so many people? Because we start to agree. Oh, I, do you like him? No, not really. Then some goes, but he's cute. Yeah, he is. He's not there. Who are you talking with? You're talking with that DNA. That DNA that's standing up in you because Satan put it in your bloodline 35 years ago, 50 years ago, and you know nothing about it, but it rises up in you and nobody knows but you what you really like. And it's really not you. It's that thing that comes up to fight you because it knows you're the savior of the family. So I want you to mess up and make it final. People sitting here acting like, I ain't got that issue. Child, bye. Stop it. Oh, I don't like men. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm a man. I don't deal with men. Okay. So what are you fighting in your car? 
What's going through your mind, brother? Who will know it? No one but God. And that nasty DNA that's going through your system. Yeah, I would never do that to my family. You're a lie. You're a lie. Just let you have a good chance. Oh, I don't like him. He's married. That, that, come on, stop it. What's, in, what's sizzling in your blood? What's going through? Because what's in your blood shows in a picture in your mind. Your blood speaks. Didn't, didn't God say that when, when, when Abel's blood fell to the ground, it started to talk to God? And the blood said, I don't belong in ground. I belong in the body. What am I doing here, God? And God had to make a remedy for the blood. Lord. Mm. Mm. Pure, somebody say pure bloodline. God says, this is how, uh, hallelujah, this is how I'm going to get my people back. I'm going to get my people back by making an ark. I'm going to make an ark. I'm going to make a church. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to make, I'm going to make, I'm going to make a church. I'm going to make an ark. I'm going to make a saving place. I want, uh, I want Noah. Oh God, put your family in the ark, which equals eight people. And eight is the number of new beginnings. Oh, uh, Noah, take, uh, take eight people, put eight people in the ark. And then the rest of the things you'll put in, ark, in the ark are animals. I'm going to put animals. And this is what, and I preached this before, but this is what got me past the jewels that I never looked at it, that God said, put the clean animals in there and the unclean. Because production has nothing to do with label. Yo, I need to slap my own self. I, the, this is where God didn't care about what he said in Leviticus, the, the clean and the unclean. He put them together. And the Lord said, the clean and the unclean represented the Jew and the Gentile. I'm going to save them all. And I'm going to put them together in one place. But if I have to follow, Lord, but if I have to follow Levitical law, they shouldn't even be next to each other. Oh, God. Y'all, yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put such a spirit of peace in the church that the unclean and the clean will never fight or eat each other. Lord, oh, I need to stop. I'm going to make provision, but I never, this is the problem. I never saw Noah store up food. So what did they eat for a year? Oh boy. If you keep worrying about your provision instead of your salvation, you'll only go after things. Okay. All right. No. Okay. Uh, thank you. If you keep worrying about provision and not salvation, you'll only go after things. So tithing will make sense to you. Yeah, uh, I didn't tithe. Uh, tithing. Uh, huh, huh. And all you'll hear is tithing. And somebody preaching about salvation don't get no light. But somebody talking about tithing gets all the light in the Christian church. Don't you think the devil is a liar and a deceiver? Somebody preaching the cross ain't even publicized like that but somebody talking about forgive me about tithes it's all over the internet and we fell for it hook line and sinker we fell for it someone preaching the cross and saying you must be saved you must be saved jesus is the only way we don't give him no light we got everybody talking about tithing Whew. oh Oh boy, I must have hit a sore spot. Yep, one day this message is going to go public for real. And God is going to bless the word because people need to be saved. And giving will be no problem when people really get saved. It's funny that your kids never say thank you for the food that's in the refrigerator. Never say thank you for the toilet paper. They use it. And their thanks to you is because it's used. You question your kids if they left juice in the refrigerator and nobody ate it. Nobody drank it. 
You question. Nobody opened these chips. As a parent, you go, they didn't want this? Didn't I buy it? They usually eat this. See, y'all still ain't there yet. You start to go, what's wrong with them? Because their thanks is their usage. He sent the Holy Ghost down and you don't even use it. He sent the knowledge of the word down and you don't even dive into it. At some point, the father got to go, what's wrong with my people? What do they want? I gave them every gift. I gave them the five-fold ministry and I gave them the gifts of the spirit. Why are they not accessing it? Use what I gave you and you won't listen to the enemy. Am I? Help me somebody. Am I preaching? Oh, my kotumbre bistava the hufa. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, God. So Noah now, he, he, he's in the ark, and he, and the Lord says this. I'll, I'll stop with this. He says, um, I want you, Noah, after you make the ark, I want you to use pitch. He says, pitch the ark. Somebody say, pitch the ark. So uh, let me give you this about pitch pitch right in the English it sounds like a mere technical description right uh, if you read the Hebrew it's kafar kaf peri pef peri perish it is to 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 take that substance like tar, mortar, fill in the holes. And the Lord said to Noah, pitch on the inside and pitch on the outside. But the root word, this is what bugged me out. The root word of it, of the pitch, comes from what they call in Jewish, Yom Kippur, which is atonement. My Lord, I, 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 I need some. It is to atone, to, to atone for sin. Uh, God said, the only way I'm going to save my people is to do something on the inside and do something on the outside. I want to make sure that what I, when I send judgment, it don't leak in. I also want to make sure that you don't leak out. I'm going to protect you from the inside and the outside. I am going to be. And what he promised in the New Testament is that I will seal you to the day of redemption. I'm going to seal. Now I want you to grab this in the spirit that the Lord said, I'm going to seal my people from now on. I'm putting Gadoshaya. I'm putting something in the people of God who really want it in this season where they want their mind and their spirit to be sealed from what the devil's trying to do in society. I'm going to seal you from the from the inside. I'm going to seal you on the outside. And what people are suffering from, you'll float on. She still ain't loud yet. I'm going, to, I'm going to do something on the inside of you that seals you in. Meaning your heart will always be right. Nothing will get inside your heart and your mind. Now you'll keep your mind stayed on me and your heart will be right. You'll have a pure conscience before God and man. You won't have nothing against your brother and your sister. And on the outside with the devil, the fiery darts of the enemy, no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper in any Every tongue that rises up you up against you, I will condemn. This is the inheritance of the saints. Yeah. Let me get here. Let me hear. Let me hear. Let me get here. Let me hear so touch you more. I'm going to, but the pitch was applied by the chosen man, not by God only thing God did was seal the door. I'll preach to you, Andrew, because you seem to enjoy it. The only thing God did, he says, I want you, Noah, to take 
this substance and apply it to the ark. Seal the ark from what I'm telling you is going to come. Seal the church, Pastor Andrew, Pastor Jules, because once they get in, the darts are coming. Once they get in the church, the problem with the body of Christ, I want all you sleepy folks to hear me. You wouldn't be sleepy if this was a movie. Uh, 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 uh. The problem is we can get you in, but sometimes you leak out. We, we can get you in, but what you have to float on, you haven't sealed yourself enough, and then you sink. Why do the people of God keep sinking? Uh, why, why, why? Why is it always something? You don't sink off your job. You don't sink in your relationships. You don't sink in you pleasing yourself. But you always sink when it comes to God's stuff because you have not been insulated. I need somebody to put your hand up and say, Lord, let me insulate myself with your word. Now, I got to hurry up here. When, 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 what was Noah's word? Noah didn't have a word. There was nothing written at this time. Noah's word was obey me. <sighs> Noah, see, this is where we fail. Noah had to go off an invisible voice and obey it to the T. And he never questioned who was talking. And we can't go on what's written, tried and proven for years. And we tell you to be obedient to the word. You go, well, see, I don't know about that part. See, mm, ah, mm, ah. And while you're doing that, you're sinking. Because God, the reason why you're sinking is the water's coming. You got stuff inside of you that needs to be protected. But God ain't closed the door yet. He can't close the door until you have insulated his house. He cannot finish his work when your work is not done. What he commanded you to do for you, you I just saw a demon running. Don't worry. He kissed my mama. What he has told you to do, you have not done it. So he can't seal you to the day of redemption. You are an open vessel, and open vessels always get flooded. Lord. I'm, oh God. Open vessels allow water to seep in. God wants to close the door to this ministry. But you will not let God, you won't finish your work. Stop coming to the altar for deliverance when you haven't sealed yourself. The only reason why you keep coming because you haven't sealed all your cracks. What, no wonder you come up here every week. <laughs> Seal yourself and see what happens. I need you to point, point, put that down your row. Tell somebody, seal yourself with the word and see what happened. Seal yourself with faith and see what happened. Seal yourself with everything he said. Pray, fast, meditate. Pray, fast, meditate. Pray, fast, meditate. Read your word. Read your word. Study your word. Study your word. Put the word in you. That's putting the pitch in every crevice of your life. That's putting the pitch in every crevice and everything that the devil, every hole, everything that your uncle did, everything that your mama did, everything that the church did, everything that you went through, you're putting the word in it. You can't help church hurt with, with words. Why are you trying to help? You, I was hurt by the church. So put the word in there, not the church. Y'all need to pass that down your row. You talking about church hurt? Well, use the, word. use the word. The word ain't never hurt you. The word corrected you. Okay. Let's finish my soliloquy for the day. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, help us, Lord. As I finish this I want to tell you what God did and what he's doing for you 
Say, what is God doing for me all through this? What is he doing? Come on, ask yourself, what is he doing? What is he doing? Some of y'all got baptized and the Holy Ghost touched you. What is he doing? He, he, made, he made an evil world pregnant with you. I need you. He told Satan, this is God's revelation to me. I'm sorry, I didn't read this. I got some stuff, but the Lord gave it to me while I was praying. He told the devil that the womb was going to be his destruction. What is a baby floating in? A baby's floating in water, but still insulated. He's insulated within and without. Okay. Uh, uh, he takes, you know, it's only God that can take the unholy because the only person in Noah's family that was righteous was Noah. <laughs> so the seven was just a requirement of God to go in, but he was the holy one. He only says, Noah, you're righteous. He never said, your son, your sons, your daughters, and your wife, they're righteous. No, he said, Noah, you're righteous. So it, remind of, it reminds God when he tells, when he says to Lot, if, if he says to Abraham, if I find how many righteous? He starts going down the list. And he still spares Lot's life. Because Lot was supposed to die with him. God only needs one person to cause revival. Okay? I don't care what these jokers are saying about it's all of us. It's never been all. There's only been one man that caused some to come. It takes one man to stand up. Then the other, that one man will cause others to come to the light. But God needs one. He didn't raise John the Baptist and. Most of us don't want to go because the pressure is too great to be by yourself. So you always need a group to say yes along with you. But this yes is a singular one. I need somebody right now, if you're not ashamed, feel a little cultural with me in churchy. I just need you to open your mouth Real wide and say, Yes, Lord. Kata. Tata masite. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Noah. Noah is the only one. I'll get there in a second. I know that ain't your key, but I'll get there in a second. I can hear. Uh. Noah is in the boat and he's righteous and he's floating. And the promise is to Noah, uh, he's the man. Uh, he's, there's a womb, they're floating. 150 days, the water rises. 150 days. 100 another 50 days it takes to subside. And the Bible says this. And God remembers Noah. So if God remembers him, that will make you take the idea that God forgot him. God didn't forget him. God had to allow the process of time to happen. God needed every giant spirit to be dead. Before the door opened. Ooh, good to be sure. God needed to make sure that every spirit that's following your bloodline is securely dead. I said securely. Lord Jesus. What 
It's taking God's time for your blessing to happen because everything that needs to die is not dead yet. And what's living will destroy what he wants to do. So I need you to be happy right now and tell yourself, uh, uh, my prophecy's coming to pass when all the giants in my life are dead. Uh, when those giant spirits are drowned in my life, 150 days to rise, 150 days to, to dissipate. That's 300. Now, this is what got me. It says this. Mm. Uh, mm. We are told, my other notes I couldn't, that on the first day of the month of 600 years, the 600th year, Noah opened the covering of the ark. Somebody say amen. amen. It's in your Bible. And afterwards, we're told that on the 27th day of the second month of the 600th years, that God instructed Noah to leave the ark and to begin to repopulate the earth. On the seventh day of the seventh month, the ark came and rested. That's Genesis on the mountain of Arit. That's Genesis 8 and 4. Now, isn't it funny? On the 17th day of the seventh month is the day that Jesus rised from the dead. In layman terms, the same day Noah opened the ark is the same day the tomb opened up. Oh, <laughs> you are not in an ark for just your deliverance. You are in an ark with a bunch of wild beasts, clean and unclean, because you're getting ready, Lord Jesus, to start something new. Uh, I need you to look at somebody close to you and say, my deliverance is for a new race of people that's going to serve God 100%. I'm not just here in this church to have a good time. I'm here to be delivered and to deliver. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, boy, I feel like preaching, but I'm a, I'm a, I feel like preaching a little bit. But I, I, I'm, I'm trying to give you what the Lord says and just leave it alone. God planned this whole ark experience with dirty animals. With the things that could kill you. He's in the ark with poison. He's in the ark with hungry animals that are not being fed. He's in the ark with the temptation of him being hungry. <laughs> he's in the ark what he, God the one thing God I want y'all to see this and hear it the one thing God never told Noah to do was provide for himself he never said store up hay and straw he never said kill meat and store it there is no refrigerator here there's, there's no there's no there's no um, there's no there's no storage. He never said, hey, salt your meat. Never said preserve. Y'all still ain't getting it yet. You. There's nothing in here that says, he tells, he tells, oh, okay, he tells his disciples, don't take no money, no purse, and no script. Jeez, he, has, he says, just go with me. Just, 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 
I don't know if I have any people in the church that will say, I'll just go with his name. Just, just say, you're panicking. You, you're worried. Like, how? How am I going to make it? There's a food shortage coming. There's a gas price inflation. There's this and there's that. And how are we going to make it? What are we going to do? Oh, you better get a freezer, girl. You better freeze your meat. You better get all the cans that you can. You better prepare because, because get beans, get rice, uh, and make a garden. Uh, uh, we're going to get pods and, 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 and grow trees and, and, and fruit and we're going to put peaches in the back because we don't know what's coming. That's the problem. We're not supposed to know what's coming. We're supposed to be the now. And if I got the, if I'm in the purpose of God, I don't need to provide for me. All I got to do is open up my mouth and say what the say of the Lord. All I got to do is to declare what I hear him saying because he is my provision. What are you afraid about? Uh, the old songwriter said like this, if you know the Lord is blessing you, uh, y'all ain't got no old church people in here what you gotta worry about uh, if you know that the Lord is keeping you uh, why don't you scream and shout that's G uh, glory hallelujah uh, praise his name uh, every day if you know uh, that the Lord is with you uh, what you got to worry about uh, I need you to look at your neighbor uh, and tell your neighbor I'm on assignment and I'm not worrying about what's going on I'm on assignment and I gotta do what he says do I'm on assignment I don't have to worry about money I'm on assignment I ain't gotta worry about gas I'm on assignment I don't gotta worry about food shortage I'm on assignment and if I do his will I will be blessed because a cattle upon a thousand hills belongs to my father if he multiplied bread if he multiplied fish surely I don't have a witness in the building but surely surely he'll provide for me slap your neighbor on the shoulder and say I will not fear and I won't worry for God is on my side I'm not afraid of what's coming I'm walking into it with my hands up I'm walking into it with my eyes open and I'll give God praise yes for this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad therein I was glad when they said unto me let's go into the house of the Lord I did not fear I wasn't worried about food I wasn't worried about electricity I wasn't worried about my bills but I I'm on assignment. I'm on assignment. I'm on assignment. I'm on assignment. Get in the boat. It's getting ready to rain. Get in the boat. Get saved. Give your life to Jesus. Yes. Yes.